Bonjour à toutes et tous. Good, good, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the final day of the first edition of the South Asian Digital Arts Festival, Deconfined. Organized under the aegis of November Numeric and with the support of the French Network in South Asia, especially French Institute in India, the network of Alliance Francaise in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Maldives, this month-long online exhibition and series of conversations um, were created and curated by Media Arts South Asia. The Media Arts South Asia is dedicated to the promotion and dissemination of media and digital arts practices in South Asia. And we are very glad that this year we could bring you 13 phenomenal artists from France and South Asian countries who contributed to 11 artworks. We received support from curators, art critics, cultural practitioners, and directors of Alliance Francaise in the network who willingly and happily participated in the festival uh, with us. We are extremely grateful to them. In this closing note, I am extremely glad to welcome the Councillor of Education, Science and Culture from the Fem French Embassy in India, Mr. Mr. Emmanuel Lebron Damien. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for supporting this initiative and joining us today. And welcome to India. How are you? Merci beaucoup. Good evening. Bonjour. Great to have you. I'm also pleased to present Proiti, the co-curator of the festival. I would request her to present us a brief summary of the festival before we begin our discussion with Emmanuel today. Um, thank you, Khal, and hello to Emmanuel, and hello to everyone who's watching. Um, like Khal said, I will just be taking you through the festival, the, the main highlights, if you will. Deconfine is an online media art festival that was conceived and curated by Media Art South Asia. It ran from 6 November until today. The website will be available for all to view for the foreseeable future. Deconfine was developed under the ages of November Numeric, an annual initiative by the French Institute in Paris. This was the inaugural edition of the festival. It was supported by the network of Alliance Francaise in South Asia, including India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, as well as the French Institute in India. Deconfine featured artists Amai Kataria from India, Beatrice de Fez and Matthew Constance from France, Bilhata Kesi from Nepal, Danushka Marasinghe from Sri Lanka, Faisal Anwar from Pakistan, who's based in Canada, Justine Emard from France, Polash Khattacharji from Bangladesh, Parvati Nair from India, Pierre Jean Gilou from France, Pierre Muto from France, Vincent Moon and Priscilla Telman from France. It also featured conversations by curators Anushka Rajendran from India, Pauline Fournier from France, Premjish Achari from India, Nadia Samdani from Bangladesh, and researchers from In Common in France and Hidden Pockets in India. The festival examined the evolving and multifaceted nature of human technology relationships and showcased works and initiatives that leverage the potential of technology to reflect on that relationship and other social issues. Deacon Fine was also proud to host an online workshop by artist Amai Kataria for a group of seven students from premier design institutes in India. The workshop explored the concept of the fourth dimension and introduced participants to the process of producing creative work with augmented reality. Week one began with the inauguration of the festival, where Kyle and I introduced the festival and conducted a virtual walk through the exhibition. We were also very pleased to have Hannah Lou from the French Institute in Paris and Jean Hans, the director of the Alliance Francaise Foundation in Paris. And we also had Gael de Kerguenek, the director of the Alliance Francaise in Ahmedabad with us for the event. This was followed by a conversation with Jasmine and Aisha George from Hidden Pockets in Bangalore and Natasha from In Common in France, who shed light on how their respective projects use technology to benefit local communities. Vincent Moon discussed the philosophy that drives his work, his views on the Creative Common License, and of course, his film that he created with Priscilla Telman called Tajalli, uh, the Shahi Kawals of Ajmer, which premiered on Deacon Fine. Pauline Fournier spoke about her involvement with the Toulouse Hackerspace Factory, an alternative space for experimentation with technology, which she was part of for half a decade. And now we come to week two. Pierre Jean Gilou discussed the concept of metabolism and how it influenced his video art. He was in conversation with Eva Martin, the director of Alliance Francaise in Trivandrum. We also had Justine Emmert, who talked about her body of works, which explore notions of coexistence between new technologies and humans. In week three, we had curator Anushka Rajendran, who shared her experiences in developing digital exhibitions and talked about the changes necessitated by this new format and their effect on her curatorial process. We had Amal Kataria, who talked about his background and his work, Mom, I'm Safe, and how it exists across multiple modes. We also had Polash Bhattacharji, 
who discussed his artistic process, his influences and plans for his artistic future. We had Nadia Samdani who shared her experiences in co-founding and organizing the Dhaka Art Summit and the rising global interest in South Asian art. These speakers, this conversation was moderated by Dr. Selvam Torres, the director of the Alliance Frances in Chittagong. We had Danushka Marasinghe from Sri Lanka who shed light on contemporary media arts in his country and discussed his background and the historical and societal influences on his work. This conversation was moderated by Bruno Duparc, head of the French Cultural Network in Sri Lanka and the Maldives. In the final week, Parvati Nair, the artist from India, talked about how she explores water as a subject in her practice and how she created a special three-part video series that was featured on Deconfine called Water Exchanges. And she was in conversation with Bruno Plas, the director of the Alliance Frances in Chennai. Then we had Faisal Anwar in conversation with curator Premjish Achari, and they discussed data-driven art and the ethical use of social media and how it influences Anwar's work. We also had Nepali artist Vidhata Kesi, who reflected on her foray into the media arts and took us behind the scenes of her first experimental video piece, Adhar, which is featured on Deconfine. This conversation was moderated by Anne Lor Petit, the director of the Alliance Frances in Kathmandu. And finally, we had Beatrice DeFace and Matthew Constance, who spoke about their practice, which is situated at the intersection between augmented reality and painting. This conversation was moderated by Samuel Berthet, the director of the Alliance Frances in Hyderabad. I mean, we, as you can see, we had a full house and we are very glad that we were able to pull this off and nothing went wrong. So thank you to everyone who made that possible. And now I would like to invite Emmanuel to share his thoughts on the festival and because the festival wouldn't have been possible um, without the support that you gave us. So if you could uh, share your thoughts and if you want to talk about any specific artworks or what you want. Thank you very much, Proiti. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to um, underline the fact that this is a, a regional project. You uh, went through all the program and we could see um, all the artists that were involved and the country they came from and the organizations who uh, organized all these um, performances, uh, meetings, workshops, webinars. Um, it's really something important to me because um, it's the fourth edition of, um, of Novembre Numérique. Uh, it's an event that is a global event. It happens in 75 countries in more than 100 cities. And here in Deconfine, uh, we go uh, beyond borders. And for me, when you talk about digital, uh, it's exactly that. It's uh, the ability to do something with someone who is in another country, who is perhaps at the other end of the planet. And so it's, um, it's a project that to my point of view, would have less meaning if it was only uh, organizations from one country doing it. And so here we had uh, all the Alliance Francaise from India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, working together to promote uh, digital art and to offer this platform to, to artists. So um, that's the first thing I, um, I, I, I take from, from this month that is uh, nearly over. The second thing is that, for me, watching um, the websites, the webinars, the art, was a bowl of fresh air. Because um, COVID has disrupted our lives uh, since March. And, and people who were not used to working uh, digitally suddenly had to. Uh, me included. Uh, I was used to... Uh, to work on, on, on digital um, and use digital ways to work, but not at this uh, uh, scale. And, and so we developed from March to now a kind of love-hate relationship with, with digital. We loved it because we were in a lockdown and, and it was the only way we could still see the faces of our, of our family, of our friends. We could have some moment of um, uh, conviviality. Uh, but at the same time, it, it was a, a huge frustration not being able to see more than just a screen. And, and all these professional meetings that were moved into the digital sphere. And we could see that the digital sphere, and I think it's a good thing, is not 
uh, it doesn't bring all the uh, the benefits of real life. So so we had this love hate relationship with um, with the digital tools, and suddenly Deconfine comes with um, artists showing how they use this to bring art to us. And suddenly we saw this through a, through a different eye. And you see this in the, in the works that were presented. Uh, you're asking me which were the works I enjoyed most. Well, if I go back to this love-hate relationship, I'd say that um, uh, Mom, I Am Safe, for example, for me, epitomizes the love part. Um, Amai Kataria, in his work, uh, uses the uh, camera in his studio at his home to stay in touch with the outside world, uh, with his family, but also his audience who can send messages. And he has a printer, and, and he prints the messages people send. So that was really the... Um, the love part of the um, of the digital uh, use during COVID, and then we had the the most down, or the downsides of it in in a piece like uh, Adhar by uh, Bitaka Kese from Nepal, with uh, this old man, uh, his hand and using his his iPhone uh, um, all the time, showing how dependent we are from this technology how even this technology becomes part of our body, uh, that the phone never leaves the, um, the, the, the hand. And, and this man is old and, and trembles, and that was something way more scary. But um, uh, during this whole month, uh, I think at a point when we were really exhausted with uh, digital work, suddenly you, uh, all the Alliance who organized it and yourself, you brought another dimension that was so refreshing. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for those words. I mean, they mean a lot to us. And yes, exactly, that was the whole um, objective that we had in our mind when we curated this whole festival, that we wanted to create through digital platforms uh, a space wherein we can talk about technology and human relationships. This love-hate relationship, which you just mentioned, is at the core of it. And to explore um, our relationship with technology um, and to understand what it really means and to understand also how we could better live and question the way we are currently living were all basically objectives of this festival. Um, it's also a great pleasure. So, sorry yeah. for interrupting, uh, KL, it's a very interesting point because you're not talking only about digital, but you're talking about technology. And yeah. I was surprised. I was happily surprised during the festival to see this uh, different field coming in. Um, in a piece, for example, like uh, coexistence with AI, such as artificial intelligence, uh, it's not only artificial intelligence which is showcased in this performance, it's also robotics. Uh, just to remind uh, the audience, so it's a piece by uh, Justine Emma, and we see a kind of choreography between a Japanese actor and a robot. And um, it's the, um, how natural and artificial life can talk to each other. And you know, first it's beautiful. I found the reaction of the robot to the acting uh, really um, uh, very artistic. And at the same time, at um, uh, a time when we have all these debates about robots and you know, all of which I think is uh, rubbish, uh, debate about robots replacing us in the near future and taking power. I don't believe in that at all. Um, you brought technology way beyond just digital um, to show that beyond this technology, it, there's something that people perhaps don't think about, which is art and culture. Perhaps one day we'll go and see ballet and we'll have robots mixing with dancers. And, and, um, and so I think it's um, uh, in the presentation of the festival at the beginning, I thought it would be only about digital and it's logic because it's the way you show this art to the audience. But I, I, I appreciated that the, um, the topics you dealt with were way broader. It's very, it's heartening to hear that you noticed this um, because this is something we tried to ensure 
to have like you said uh, we wanted to highlight the diversity and of course like we are grateful to the artists who really the the works that they contributed to this um, in collaboration with us um, made sure that we were able to highlight as many different uh, aspects of this relationship as possible. And also I want to say here that um, what we didn't realize was that during the process of making of this festival, as you just said, that working with the digital platform made it really possible for us to engage with audiences and, part and partner with institutions and people from across borders. Sitting in Europe, we tried to create this festival with artists from all over the world Faisal is from Toronto. Um, Amai was sitting in Chicago. We had Nadia Sandani uh, from Bangladesh, people from India coming together. So it, it really felt like um, the digital means allowed us to collaborate beyond the borders, beyond the, the societal um, restriction that we have today. Um, and in a way, we feel that the COVID pandemic accelerated, accelerated this push towards digital arts and thinking about human technology relations. And that became a great context for the festival to work on. Um, Emmanuel, I, I would also like to ask you as to how do you think that these regional collaborations, uh, especially with the French network, because the French network is widely spread and I, was, I had the pleasure to work with the Alliance Frances in Ahmedabad. And I feel that the, net, the network that it is spread, especially in the subcontinent, the Indian subcontinent, um, I think that there's a huge potential to explore there and to collaborate with them and to do things together. Clearly, um, two things on that. The first is that we need uh, projects that are carried by all our French cultural, net, um, cultural centers in, in India, all the Alliance Francaise and the French Institute. Um, because um, India is a huge country. We have a big footprint. You know, we have 14 Alliance Francaise plus uh, the French Institute. So uh, it's, uh, it's a very big network. But uh, to have a project like this that um, allows every organization to bring its uh, piece to the, uh, to the edifice is very important in terms of how do we work together and uh, how do we uh, animate the, uh, the, the, our French Indian cultural life through this network. And the fact that we do it with several countries makes it even more interesting. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is you showed us that we can reach out to an audience beyond the cities where we are. And um, India being such a, a big country, I think that even if we are in 14 different cities, and if, in fact more because many alliances have annexes in other cities, um, we, we will have after COVID to continue to work as you have done using the digital means to reach out to people uh, in other cities, in the countryside, or even outside of India. Um, my conviction is that if we want to touch uh, the Indians, we have to talk to the diaspora as well. And uh, having an Indian artist in Chicago uh, performing something that is shown on a platform created by the French uh, Alliance Française and the French Institute in, uh, in India. I mean, this is how you can talk to, to India as a whole. And I think it's the first time we do it at this scale. Um, so the question is, how will we, after COVID, continue to use uh, these ways to perform online? It's something, I, I'm afraid, more difficult than we think it is. So we have to try things evaluate their impact. I'll be very uh, interested to see uh, all the, um, the debrief you will be able to make after this month of Deconfine, the figures. Uh, have we managed to, um, to reach out to people that were absolutely not in touch with what we were doing before? Um, and there's a huge potential of development here. And so for me, uh, for us at the French Institute, it's, it's a key question for our programming. Um, before Proiti, uh, I just had something to add here, um, was that exactly, I mean, the whole idea is to touch upon people who are not in the network of arts per se, um, with the students of Alliance Francaises. And one more goal that we also have, this edition, we didn't have enough, enough time to basically um, put our courses together, but we really hope that in next editions, uh, which it may, if they happen, to do also in multiple languages, to have the website and the text and the content 
and and the communication in multiple languages from urdu bangla hindi english to have a complete transversal approach and connect with people that probably have not been in touch with these arts or even in general arts um, so i think that's one goal that we have in our mind and we really want to work towards it of course with your support um priti i would leave to you for the for the next question well um as we discussed of course this project was created under the digital november initiative and uh, one thing that we wanted to highlight like i mentioned was that we just we didn't just have artworks but we also highlighted certain initiatives which use technology to um address societal problems and so on so emmanuel um what kind of projects do you see happening in south asia under this initiative the digital november initiative in the coming years considering the widespread move towards digital platforms and tools that we are witnessing now and this move is of course partly due to necessity and partly because they offer new creative when new creative avenues or new possibilities that were previously um not available so what kind of projects do you see happening in the south asian region under this initiative so the first thing which um you should keep that was very important to me was the mix of artistic exhibition and performance and dialogue webinar cooperation between artists from different countries um we at the french institute we are here to encourage a cultural dialogue uh, between france and india and between french and indian artists if you just do an exhibition if you just do a concert if you just show and then disappear i think you miss something um our role as a cultural diplomacy is to allow people to meet talk to each other um exchange on common challenges exchange on their ideas work together perform and stay in touch and this is something that was very present in deconfine throughout the month thanks to the webinars for example and so you created linked between french and indian artists and of course a uh, dialogue and a link between the artists and the audience so that that the first thing which for me is very important and I, i i know you will keep that in the future and and we at the french institute in something we want to um to do more and more i think for the future um if we could continue to show how diverse digital arts are because when people think digital arts they they, they think it's a very narrow field and through this month what struck me is the fact that it was visual arts it was performing arts it was literature it was video games it's, it's so many things uh technology robotics uh, as i mentioned before uh, augmented reality uh, there was a wonderful piece um i think it was by beatrice de fais and mathieu couston uh, in space where you could see paintings and then people go there with um Uh, uh, an augmented reality tool and suddenly you see things that you could not discover just by watching at the painting so it opened eyes to many people to the variety of what we can do in terms of digital arts so that would be something i would keep in the future i think you have so many uh, questions to 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 present and try to answer um there there are things that have interested me for 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 years now but um the, the fourth industrial revolution is totally disrupting the artistic field so how do you mix uh, tech and arts how do you use um these two fields and and invent new things when you when you um uh, bring them together so just an example for example of a question i'd love to 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 have people uh, talk about is what if a piece of art is created by a robot or an artificial intelligence um for example it raises the question of rights who owns the rights uh, is it the um, people who created the robots or who created the artificial intelligence is it the publisher is it the artificial intelligence itself <laughs> i don't think it has a bank account though so so there are many questions behind there are serious questions in terms of um 
the management of the art world as well and, uh, and its organization. So um, that's a lot of food for thoughts for future webinars, for your future editions. Um, it, it's, it's a huge field that you have opened uh, with this uh, deconfine operation. And, um, and, and you'll have many, many topics to talk with, with uh, some of the most innovating and brightest people in the world. So, um, so I, see, I, see, I really see a, a big future for, uh, for an operation like this one. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for those words. I mean, they, they really mean a lot to us. And as you said, that we have just begun uh, scratching the, the surface. And there's a lot more to explore, to analyze, to study, and to present in form of artworks, in form of conversations, as you said, and other possible means that we will hopefully see in the next uh, few years. And also following what you said, um, and that, that gives me an opportunity to also show uh, and share that we have been able to put together all the conversations on the website. And all of those uh, conversations that have happened, including the online exhibition to some extent, because some artworks were live, so they will not be accessible. But we intend that all of those things are available on the website as an archive for people to access. So even though the festival probably ends today, officially, um, the festival will continue and will continue to be on the website in a digital space for people to come and access. And I will just share my screen to, to share um, to our audiences as to where they can find these things. So the moment you go on the archive, you can have all of these conversations that have happened in the past month uh, with content, with information about what happened, which organization, which institute, which director, which artists, and which artwork. And you can easily open any of these videos and go through it and study them. As well as we also have the online exhibition, which will remain online Apart from, of course, there'll be some minor changes which will happen because the works which are live will not be there, but the works which are not live will continue to be so on the website. So we do encourage people and audiences to come and, and explore the works, even though the festival is officially over. At the same time, we also take the opportunity uh, with Proiti to announce an open call um, for uh, the media artists and digital artists in South Asia. Uh, what we intend to do through this Media South Asia initiative is to actually create a database um, of researchers, galleries, students, organization exhibitions, wherein we can pull in our resources together, connect with people, and make all of these works of these artists accessible for larger audiences. Because in South Asia, we, find it do, we do find it hard to find that one source that we can go and access all that information from. So this is one of the initiatives that we also have to basically invite artists to come and so that we can actually do document and uh, promote their artworks through a digital space again. And this also becomes a form of um, a network. I think once this database is created, it also becomes a chance to um, encourage regional cooperation between artists, find ways that how can a Bangladeshi artist or an Indian artist can collaborate with a Pakistani artist with a French artist or someone from US. So I think the digital just expands all the all of these possibilities that we have in front of us. And we do encourage all institutions, artists in South Asia and even in Europe to connect with us, to write to us in any means possible so that we can uh, make this even bigger and better. So congratulations to all the organizers. Uh, it's been a huge work. Uh, it's a very big success. So really it was a teamwork and you're, you're a beautiful team. So, um, and we were part of the French Institute to be part of this team. But, uh, but the initiative came from the Alliance uh, and this should be recognized uh, because uh, uh, in terms of doing something as a network and achieving that, uh, it's just uh, wonderful. So congratulations to all, félicitations. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, thank you for your kind words. And of course, thank you for being here with us today. It was a great pleasure to have you. And now we've reached the end of this event, but of course, <clears throat> uh, we have a long list of people to thank without whose presence, without whose hard work, this would not have been possible. So, of course, we want to express our heartfelt gratitude towards all the partner organizations, the Alliance Francaise spread out across South Asia, whose um, directors gracefully accepted our invitation to moderate conversations. 
Uh, we also want to thank all the artists, the curators, the researchers who allowed us to feature their works and ideas in the festival. This would not have been possible without their immense generosity, especially at a time like this when the need for community and fraternity is ever increasing. A very, very big thank you to each and every one of you. We also want to extend a special note of thanks to Gael, whose support and initiative led to the birth of this festival, I would say. And we also want to thank Harshal Shukla, the cultural coordinator of Alliance Frances Ahmedabad, who spearheaded the massive communication drive that this festival necessitated. Along with that, we would also like to thank the cultural coordinators and officials of all the partner organizations within the French network. Um, their cooperation was absolutely essential throughout this whole process. We would also like to thank members of the press who wrote about our festival. And lastly, we would like to thank each and every individual who visited the website, listened to the conversations, or participated in the workshop. Your engagement is at the core of this festival, and we hope you will join us in the future as well. With that, we bid you goodbye for now. Please keep an eye on mediaartsouthasia.org for more updates. Thank you.